welcome. This is Paul. This is Jason. And this is Don't Call Me Pretentious. And we are reviewing Season 2, Episode 5, Star Trek Discovery, Saints of Imperfection. Jason, give me your overall thoughts. Big uh, big level, high level thoughts? Yep. Get your life together, Star Trek. What? Get your life together. <laughs> what Get does that even oh mean? Oh my gosh. I, I, this, was, this was very much ado about nothing. I what do you just mean? I mean it was all just to get that guy back, I feel like. Culver? Yeah. Yeah. And I I didn't need any of it. And if they really wanted him back, don't kill him. And if they really wanted him back, let's do it better than this and not with a whole hour. Just I mean, the, I okay. mean oh, there was time oh yeah, by time travel maybe at the end. Ooh, neat. Why don't mm-hmm. we we could lead with that, baby? I <laughs> Mm-hmm. How did you feel about it? Oh, what's your high level? Well, disagreement returns because overall, I really like this oh, episode. Oh God, you didn't! I'm going to convince did. you. I'm going to persuade you. Well, no, no, no. This because... was the worst episode so far. Oh no, no, no. episode three was so bad. <laughs> episode three was by far the, the neat worst day episode. episode. No, no, no. That was last week. That was episode four. Episode three was the one that what was, was awful. that. What happened again? We've seen all five. What oh, was it? Oh, episode three. That was the one. Uh, Point of light. That was the one where um, uh, where we're we're with uh, Laurel, where we go oh, to Kronos no, and, all, so, and you fine. see the baby happen. No, it's fine. There was a metal as fuck. Hated that episode. Klingon fight. That was awesome. I hated that episode. <laughs> awful. What a garbage episode oh, that was. Man. No, Saints of Imperfection. I, I like. Okay. Uh, now. Here's the thing. You say you're going to convince me, but I mean, the part that you're talking about with Culver coming back. No, that's not even. That's not even. That was by far the worst part of the episode. Not even half. I even have a comment about here. Like, like I, I I hate how that happened. If it was, if it was a movie, I would have said like that's super lazy and that's an awful way Uh, for that movie to go. I'm glad the fact that that it's a TV show. It's one of those things like, okay, you had to bring him back. They, you're right. They shouldn't have killed him off in the first place for a number of reasons. Number one, it, it, you know. It brought back, you know, ideas of the the bury your gaze trope. So, like, that was not a good thing to do in the first place. Bury your gaze. Yeah, you've never heard of that. What is that? That's a trope in in movies, and it's where like you have uh, a gay character that dies in the movie to show because like it, like you know it, it usually uh, you know up until recently right to show that they're mortal to let us know that no, gays no, no, are no. mortal no not to show that they're mortal <laughs> but to get you to feel something for them oh right? i already feel stuff for them that's stupid right? yeah well okay but you're a liberal right we're liberals oh, that's not necessarily the case it's like did you ever see that movie uh with matthew mcconaughey uh and samuel L. jackson a time to kill Mm-mm. you've never seen that movie Mm-mm. anywho mo- okay well there anyway there's a whole thing and at the end we should watch it we will Anyway, there's a whole thing at the end. It, it does the same kind do of thing. Do you on like race, Evil so. Giorgio? Do you like her? How do you no, feel about I it? No, I never liked you her. You never liked her. I, no. I, I, I really. I'm liking her more. Yeah, but that's not the thing. A lot more. I didn't. I didn't at first, and I was like, ah. But then, like the the Klingon episode where she showed mm-hmm. up in the cool outfit, yep. at the Atlantean outfit, <laughs> yeah. and then she, and then this episode, which I, I guess is going to be the standard uniform for the Section Thirty One show. Whatever, that's just going to happen. It's fine. It's fine. But Whatever. I. They're into bondage. She's, she's I'm into growing it. on me, and I really like. I like villains that are completely scrupulous, but also have like a, a tether to nobility, right? Like with yep. her, with her thing with with uh, Michael, where okay. she's like, she's she, she will always try and do right by Michael, even if she's shitty to like everyone else, right? Even if she's a tyrant, or a, I don't know. I, I, don't I, I like we'll the, find out. I like the presumption of it. Right, yeah. and I like I like using that as a as a, a way to drive someone's character arc, and I'm yeah. fine. And I like that about yeah. Georgia. I was like, okay, I can yeah. get behind that. And that's one of the things I liked about Lorca. Right, was that mm-hmm. he was kind of like scrupulous and not normal. Sorry, the captain, but he was like, it's for the war, and we must win the war. Context is for sure. kings. Sure, I loved that shit. Sure, but and so I so I'm willing to. And we could have just kept Lorca and not do Captain Georgia again. But whatevs. Yeah. <laughs> Jason Isaacs probably commands a little bit more money. Although, you know, Michelle Yeoh, she was just in Crazy Rich Asians that did well. So, I mean, I don't know how much she's making either, but I, I just, I don't know. I feel like Jason Isaacs probably cost more. Did you like how uh, Michael was uh, shushed by Pike with just the hand wave? Or when they when? Fir- when they first met the Section 31 captain, what's his name? Oh, um, starts with an L. Let's call him Larry. No, when no, they no, met no. Larry. <laughs> what, what, I, I don't know. I have it written down. We just watch it. Uh, it's it's like Lionel or something like that. Lanolin, like sheep's wool. Oh God, 
I thought I had it written down. I, it I doesn't matter. He's it, utterly forgettable. I can tell you that much. I, I don't remember his for name. For now, for now. But anyway, that guy, that very that very cool guy that were, runs Section 31. Leland. Anyway, Leland. Leland. There that, you go. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, when they met him, and, yep. and she, she, he says something about, I don't want it to look like I'm doing a favor for an old friend, and, and Michael's about to like pounce on him. Mm-hmm. And then and then Pike kind of like waves his hand. Nah, 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 nah. He's like, one second, don't say anything, Michael. Like he even preempted it completely. He expected yeah. her to mouth off. Yeah. Anyway, I like that a lot. Okay. Well, anyway, it's the little things. So before we continue, uh, if you're watching this, you'll notice that it's obviously a little late compared to when we usually do. We had I was sick this week. You might still be able to hear it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then I was had Valentine's. Yeah, Valentine's then there Day. was Valentine's Day on Thursday. So. Uh, anyway, we didn't get to it, but we're getting to it now. We wanted it for completeness. We wanted it out there, even if nobody watches this because it's four days late. We, It'll we, be fine. They'll watch it, and it's it it catalogs. This will be our best one yet. Catalogs our friendship. This will be our best one yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> what a weird reason. <laughs> anyway, it's an uh, arc. This will be our best one yet because we watched it twice before we did this. That's true. So it's because we got we got a chance to get a refresher. Mm-hmm. So I was able to watch it without having to take any notes or screenshots. It was great. God, he is so much more tolerable with the beard. Who? Uh, uh, Ash? Yeah, he's so... I can't believe how much more tolerable he is with the beard. I don't know like what hipsters. it is. hipsters. You have a thing for no, hipsters? No, it's, it's that weak chin. God bless him. What? And he's got a... That's why, it's why it's on him. That's why they put it on him. That you are chi- so weird. That chin is abysmal. You are so oh, weird. You are so, so, so superficial. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I just... I notice... I notice what makes me, like, react to things. And, like, I don't know. I, did, I just don't like male romantic leads with weak chins. <laughs> All right, we're gonna skip right past that because I don't know what the fuck is going on there. Anyway, oh, oh but on on his topic, do you, how do you feel about him? Like, you know, he has the Klingon tongue or whatever. So, like, how do you feel about calling it Kenosha? Kronos, Kronos, Kronos. 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 Here's Kronos. the thing: we have a universal translator, and everybody calls it Kronos. So that means the universal translator translates it as Kronos. So when he yeah. says Kronos, it just means the translator isn't working. It's dumb. Well, no, he's speaking English. I know, but why would he just call it something wrong, right? Well, it wouldn't be translating it. It would be like he's just speaking English. That's just the way he says it. Yeah, but surely they're all just speaking English, and that's the way they say it. Sure. Well, they say Kronos. Some people say some people pronounce supposedly with the B, Jason. I don't know how language works. Okay. I don't know the rules. All right, all right. He pronounces it weird. Apparently, it's changed the way. Was it always spelled Q O apostrophe N O S? I don't know. I think so. But, I don't know. But, maybe, maybe it was. I always thought it was K R O N O S, but I, apparently not. They 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 just spent so much time on the last on one. Of the, I don't know if it was last episode on the uh, Universal Translator. It just mm-hmm. got me thinking when he said it, and I noticed like, well, well how come it much. doesn't? All right, nitpicking. Some people say potato. Some people say potato. Some people say konosh. Some people say aluminium. <laughs> doesn't even have an I in it, and they say it anyway. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Actually, it does have an I in it for them, but y- y- anyway, nonetheless, uh, I will say. So, yeah, I talked about the Hugh stuff. I thought it was kind of lazy. If it was a movie, it would piss me off, but it's a show. They had to bring the character back, and I like the fact that he's back. I like the fact that Colbert's back. I like the fact that it means Stamets is going to stay, because remember at the beginning of the season, Mm -hmm, Stamets said mm -hmm. he was going to leave because he couldn't handle being there anymore. So this means Stamets is going to stay. That's great, because I love Stamets. I love them together. So I think that's great. I like seeing more development from Tilly. Um, oh, and I loved whenever she when she was in the My Cell Network and she like had to she just like immediately was like fine. What do we charge. have to do? Yeah, yeah. We well, well, find a gun to kill this motherfucker. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> when, when when May appealed to her sense of of uh, duty or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, and family, right? No, no, no. Right away, my whole species is gonna die if you don't help me. And she right. was like already. She's just freaking out. I'm gonna yeah, go yeah, home. And then yeah. she's like, she's like, all right, uh, I can't let a species die. Yeah, yeah. I like that no, so I like much. That. She's gonna be a good. She's gonna be a good leader. I eventually. hope she's in Star Trek for for decades and we see her become the new Tilly's Janeway. Good. It's going to be like awesome. Janeway. Yeah. Like an admiral. Yeah. We just, we just see her pop up in a, in a movie. It's just like hard as nails and like sometimes like her, her quirk will come out. Yeah. It'll be great. Yeah. It'll be sweet. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, So here, here's a question. What did you think of the overall theme about context? Because this is coming up multiple times now. Uh, what, 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 what do you mean? Well, because the whole concept of the show I felt like was this idea that you know, Kolber comes in there and they think he's an, a foreign entity, a foreign life form. And so they start attacking him like they would attack a cancer, but like, hey, it's a person. So he tries to defend himself and they think that he's attacking them. So they're in this battle 
but they both think the other one is the bad guy. You know, what right? I, like everybody's yeah. the hero yeah. of their own story. So here's what I think about it. And and this is multiple times now, right? Because yeah. we got context is king. Then we got Pike saying context is can change your perspective. Yeah. And I'm fine with all of it. It's just, I, okay. I remember when I first heard about, oh, the destroyer, like them jumping is somehow causing problems for other life forms. And, right. and I thought, oh shit, now we're going to have to deal with this for like the whole season. It's going to be like this ethical quandary. Yeah. And I was like, I wish we could just get out of this somehow. And then we, this episode happens and we got out of it because the only reason it was happening was because the doctor was following them whenever the ship would jump and it was and his poison was causing problems. So right. that's solved now. So now they can still jump. So that means that this whole thing was a contrivance. I didn't like it, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? That was all all that destroyer shit was just to get the doctor back. And I get, yeah, that you get that cute context thing in there and it is cute, but we could have just done a cool thing where where we we went to talk to the mycelial aliens and, and solved it diplomatically or something sure. or th they would have created some tension we had solved later on in the season but this i don't think this is going to come back and then now and now she's the may thing and you know what tilly yeah it it, it does make you look weird that you want her back i gotta yeah. be honest <laughs> that part i didn't buy so so uh, let me get into that because sure. the first because i mentioned last week that I did, I felt like the whole thing with Burnham and Saru, it didn't really feel earned to me because they were so contentious in the first season. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like we got any reconciliation of them being like, hey, we're family now. And then at the end, you know, so last week it was just like, you're my family. And I was like, are you, is she? I don't <laughs> know. This feels like, this feels like this fast. This week with Burnham's, oh, you yeah, know, that when was you see her powerful. with Tilly. Very powerful, yeah. Oh, it was I immediately believed it. Both, I was like, I total this totally feels earned that she cares that much about Tilly. Both moments were very powerful. Yes, yes. yes. So I I loved that, and I I had no problem with that. On the other hand, the thing with Tilly and May, right, mm -hmm. where it was like, oh, Tilly has to give up her connection to May or whatever, so that Colbert can come back, and I was just like. Well, okay, but does Tilly even like me? Like what? So it was like all of a sudden, just because just literally minutes before, May had taken stolen Tilly's rifle and was gonna shoot, and it was just like, I don't feel like Tilly would really miss her that much. Why is this a big deal? That really confused me. And I wish I could like as soon as she said it, I, I wish I could like have it. like been there to tell her like this is gonna complicate your romantic life. <laughs> <laughs> if you have this connection to this my well, it's gonna be there sport. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, we don't have to worry. I mean, no, I think the idea was that wasn't going to happen anymore. It was just there was going to be the ability for them no. to still see each other. Oh, no, I completely agree. It was it was all contrivance. But yeah, I didn't I didn't like that. I was like, well. <laughs> and so if it had been a movie, yes, let the let the character stay dead. Did you? Because, yeah, like it's just lazy otherwise. But the fact that it's a show. Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah, so many yeah, more episodes. Yeah, they need yeah. the character back, right? Yeah, sure, so sure. I, I can I can give them a pass on that. Did you notice that I won? I think this might be the only time that we've done a black alert jump mm -hmm. where we didn't spin, and it was because they realized that if they make the ship spin while it's stuck in that thing, everybody's going to get swallowed up in it. Well, it did a spin. It didn't do a spin. Right when they left, when they finally yeah. left last time, no spin. I even checked. Right? I checked to make sure because I was like, well, if they spin. It's gonna like wrap her into the 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 other space, and then they'll all get twisted or whatever. But it doesn't. It just the the ship starts to do the rotating on the on the saucer. Yeah, and then, and it then just, it stopped. And then it just boop. It just blinks somewhere else. No spin. No, 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 it didn't go anywhere else. They did the jump, but they only did it partially. So what happened was it started to spin, and then they stopped it. So just as it was doing the first spin, that's why it was tilted the whole episode. Oh and man! Then, and then and then they, okay. they they backed out. It was like they changed their mind, and then it so it just went back to normal. Okay, yeah. So they actually I, didn't I was do a, a little. Jump. I was gonna ask. I'm glad you reminded yeah. me. I didn't understand where they went or no, what. they didn't go anywhere. Because that makes sense. Because and was, that's why the other ship was there. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, how them. did they show up? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, because yeah. okay. they didn't go anywhere. That makes more sense. They just kind of jumped. They just like dipped their toe in the water and then. They hey, took Paul, it you want to know how I know that just this episode's tip. bullshit? Just the tip. Just the tip. You want to know how I know this episode's bullshit, Paul? How, how's this because the cocoon disappeared. Yeah. For no reason. Didn't disappear like, whenever Tilly did it. So why did it just melt all of a sudden? That's bullshit. It's just so that we don't we can't okay, go okay, back. Okay, so let's get into the science of the episode. Oh that's where we're going. fuck! Oh my oh god! Oh my gosh! 
It was they so were stretching bad. Things I was like, that is hard. that is brutal, bro. Like yes, when they were yeah. in, when they were like with the the doctor trying to yeah. like explain what yeah. happened. I was like, oh, I would have rather they would have said it was Jesus. Yeah, I, I, it was rough. <laughs> well, we'll get into that in a minute. Oh, too, oh about that, but. let's not. Let's just not. Let's not even. It doesn't deserve our attention. <laughs> no, the the science throughout this episode was, man. I mean, and look, Star Trek has had science that really strains credulity multiple times yeah, right yeah yeah whether it's you know the warp 10 bullshit and voyager or anything but, uh, like that but a but, minute into their explanation uh, yeah i, I was yeah. clenching my butt yeah. like it was like i was just i just I matters was, neither created or destroyed it just changes i was like wait but so did it is it matter that with it i no, I, and i was like okay maybe it's his brain waves and it's his memories that came through to my seal network as pure energy and then I think that's what happened. His oh, his, I don't his care. memory I see here. his memories came through his pure energy, and they created the matter based off of that image. But I was just let like, me, "What is me. happening? This is this is stretching it." So I claim some of this is bullshit and hypocritical. Yeah, and here's why: it so we're already doing this nonsense thing about oh, guiding hand, yeah, yeah. maybe, and there's all sorts of these god references just showing up. And yeah. okay, okay, fine, fine. But here's the thing. A big part about the debate between whether or not there is a God or whatever sure. is, you know, on our side of it, which is that there isn't one, that sure. is that, well, it's okay to say, I don't know why this happens. I don't know how this happened. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that there's a hand. Mm -hmm. We just we just don't know. And mm -hmm. I think this was a perfect opportunity. And now I'm going to be looking out for it where they find a result. And it, they need to have the bravery to just say, and it is bravery, the bravery to just say, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't know why this guy's alive. I, I guess we don't understand the Mozilla network as well as mm -hmm. this bullshit thing we made up. I guess yeah, we don't understand yeah. it as well as we thought. Yeah. And then wouldn't that be great, right? Why yeah. is he alive? It's like, oh man, this is really complicated. Life and energy are connected or what fuck ever. And, but well, in, 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 in the show's defense, they kind of did do that, remember? Because she said, because Burnham specifically says, there's nothing in the known universe that would make this possible. And then May says, nothing in your known universe. And they could have left it at that. Yeah. And, but then they went through that yeah. change of states thing. And I was like, that's not, but it's not matter. Because if it was matter, I, then it what? could come back. I, and this I, doesn't I, make sense. I, I, we could spend hours on it. Because let's just, we could just, we agree that that was just the science way was too much. The science oh, was rough. Yeah. And then, and, and by the way, getting into the science part too, the, the, I don't know if the science part. Anyway, getting into the Section Thirty One ship, where it does the tractor beam, like that's not any kind of tractor beam we've ever seen before. Why did it have to shoot those three little? Oh things? yeah, I, I hear you, and I thought I that like, too. What was that? I thought that too, and my next thought was, well, it's it's super super tech ship because it's Section Thirty One. It's oh, got some well, weird. Okay, thing. but we we've seen eighty years in the future, and they don't I have that. Know, so what is I it know. doing? I'm just I'm willing to say. It's got a unique kind of thing because it's a super secret ship. Okay, fine. I can buy. I can swallow that. It's fine. I, they have. Oh, well, they have cloaking, right? They have the yep. cloaking. Oh, by the way, just want to clear things up for me and other people who aren't super keen on on deep lore on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. I'm deeper than I give myself credit for. But like, Kinemore Accords have not happened. Have not happened. And that's why it's okay to cloak. So that's not really a cloak. That's pretty close to a cloak. It's camouflage. I know they said that specifically. But I almost wish they had just called it a cloak and then been like, and, and then that, had, it, had it be cloaking, yeah. And that would in and it would just, it maybe we could have started planted the siege the Klingon later on about yep. how they don't like us cloaking, they don't like how we use it. They'll, and maybe they could do this whole thing. Hey, we do it. We use our cloak, man. But we do it this way, and it's honorable. We don't like that you guys do it like little bitches. And so therefore, and that like plants the seeds for the Kittimer Accords later on, where that's a big thing for them. I don't know. That would have been fun. Uh, actually, the uh, the Kittimer Accords was not where this happened. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the Treaty of Algeron. I'm so sorry. Yes. And that happened in... Uh, so hold on. I'm looking it up right now. Uh, 2311. So we're in 2250 or something like that so we're still a ways away from the treaty of algeron yeah but like a little bit of just a little that would be a such a nice little easter egg to throw in is like the, the klingons don't like how we use it mm -hmm. they we use it and we, they don't understand how like how to deal with people being sneaky they yeah. don't like romulans they don't like us cloaking like romulans you cloak like romulans boys we don't like it and that, and that well, maybe that's why they wanted it in the treaty or something so so what's interesting about that is uh and so this will lead us into the part where we talk about canon okay mm-hmm 
so I was I was reading about this stuff. I was because when I saw this, I thought about wait, is this a cloak? And right, so I went right, and looked right, up right, the right, Treaty right. of Aldron uh, and I read about it. And through my reading, I read a quote from Gene Roddenberry, who said, "You know, we didn't want the Federation to have cloaking because heroes don't skulk around in the shadows, mm-hmm. right?" And then so here it is. If it were a cloak, well, and they're it's not. not well, but if it were, a cloak, okay, okay, you're not a racist, you're a racialist, right? It's the same. It's the same kind of like. It's the no, same. No, it's camouflage. It's a cloak. It's camouflage. Could they pick them up on sensors? I would think theoretically they could. It seems like they didn't. Seems like they didn't. Seems like that asshole got real close all of a sudden. Anywho, I mean, we're gonna call that plot I, armor. I, I completely agree with you. That's a. I love Gene Roddenberry's quote there. That's cool. Yes. And I, but that just that just that makes it better, right? Because that we don't want those guys to look like heroes. Sure. Right. Yes. Then you get into the whole idea. Okay, so let's talk about Section Thirty One. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk about it. Let's lay the cards out on the table. I don't know if I'm ready. What Paul. do you What do you think about it? What do you feel about Section Thirty One right now? I like it. Do you? I feel like they JJ'd it up a whole lot. Well, they definitely did that. You know, what well, they JJ'd everything up. But hey, well, JJ's yes, going to save Star-, Star Wars for us. So, okay. Okay, but JJ knows Star Wars. That's why it works for Star Wars. Ah. JJ doesn't know hey, Star Trek. Hey, we both really liked that, that 2009 Star Trek, right? Yeah, and the uh, first one was fine. Ba-da-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-
the more I don't know if I believe it. I believe it. Eh. Go back and watch TOS. No, I'm just saying you don't think they could just spruce it up a little. No, it's drastically different. I everything oh, is no, so I, weird. Oh, no, I understand it's drastically different, but it's like... Because, because the, the visual style of everything was different in the 60s. It's super colorful with weird colors that just don't work in 2019. They didn't work then, but everybody thought they did. So that's just the way everything I looked. I don't know if I buy it. Uh, maybe it they, maybe they could. It is. Uh, maybe it they is. could do it. Anyway, doesn't matter. So I'm not wed to canon, okay? Here's the thing with section 31 is I feel like outside of canon concerns, right? The canon concerns are that hey, section 31 is supposed to be covert. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows about it. That's the way it showed up multiple times. Archer didn't know about it until they came there. Yep. Cisco didn't know about it until yep. they showed up. Mm-hmm. Bashir, same thing. But in here, it's just like George is like, oh, here's this black badge. And he's like, oh, section 31. How about that? And I'm like, wait, so does everybody know about it? Yeah. So the cannon brigade is going to be pissed off about it from that perspective. Well, here's what's I a- find that weird. But here's the thing. Let me finish. Here's the thing that really frustrates me about it is it's just a dumb thing for spies to walk around <laughs> With a black badge. With a black yeah, badge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in these uniforms that all look the same. It would be like someone, a CIA spy, Having, walking around with an American patch on his shirt. Or an agent on of, his shirt. Or an, like, a, what? Or an American agent, flag. Or an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. having a S.H.I.E.L.D. cap. Yeah, it's just like... They make that joke in the trailer for Marvel. Yeah, it's that's not how this works. Like, why are they all yeah. walking around so no, I conspicuous? Compl- I, I, I take your point. It's but, so stupid. But, here, but here's, here's something about that. And I, I was... is They called it... They mentioned Article 14... Mm-hmm. which is the article that contains a section 31 mm-hmm. that outlines, I guess, what they're about. Uh, and I didn't, if there's an article in their constitution or whatever, yeah. then how could it be secret? Well, yeah. So, okay. So let, let's read. Article 14, section 31. Of? Of the Starfleet General Orders and Regulations. Yeah, right? It, sa- it says. <laughs> it's in the par- General Orders. Paragraph 1. During times of dire emergency and extreme danger to the Federation, ranking officials may take command of Starfleet property at will and preserve the Federation and its citizens at all costs. Paragraph 2. Paragraph 1 is only in effect if all of Starfleet High Command has been compromised and the fleet is is at a state of emergency. Paragraph 3. In the event that a similar scenario to Paragraph 2 takes place, the most senior captain in Starfleet Command will be put in command of the fleet. Paragraph 4. The section of Article 14 may be uh, countermanded at any time by the commander-in-chief or the acting commander-in-chief as well as the director of fleet operations, apparently. Now, I don't know how any of that (laughs) relates to... Section 31. Section 31. Uh, That seems weird to me because it says time of emergency. That being said, there's a bit of (laughs) real-life parallel to that, which is apparently oh, yeah. you can just declare national emergencies. Yeah. You can just declare emergencies yeah. and do whatever you want yeah. whenever you want to. Because it seems like, like, okay. It seems like, yes, during the war, they could have said, hey, here's a national emergency. We need Section 31 again. Mm-hmm. But apparently Section 31 is just always here. You know right? What? Like that was, the, that was the idea behind DS9 was that the Dominion War was going really badly. Yeah. And it was a time of emergency and they created Section 31. Okay. But then they showed up in Enterprise. Well, to be fair, though. In even, and now they're showing up in TOS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just to be clear about DS9, if you rem- that doesn't really work there because if you will remember when they go into his Sloan's head. He has yep. all those files, and it's like hundreds of years worth of yeah. like espionage information. Right. So, so that we thing. know they've always been there. Let me ruin your life for a second. Okay. Let me ruin your life. Okay. Let me tell you how good the Section 31 TV series could have been. Yep. And it's going to hurt. Okay. What if they had just done like this really cool thing about them, like like a first class? Mm-hmm. Like they were, you know, get Giorgio and some, you know, and that uh, some guy who's like, I want to build a superhero team or like, I want to build a spy mm-hmm. agency. Right. And like, yeah. I, I like, you know, I know you, you know me, he's like, and he's like wheeling and dealing. He's very Lyndon B. Johnson about it, you know? And he, right. and he but we're builds see it section 31, you know, yeah. and like, and you see what, and like we could start with a, a horrific like sure. incident that just needs sure. someone like them sure. to get to the bottom. And then we like you, and then it gets sure. the audience on their side. If we, do, we know what will happen if we don't do this. Right. Sure, That'd but of course, so cool. but of course, that's not gonna. That was never gonna be able to happen because Section Thirty One existed hundred years uh, ago yeah, in Enterprise yeah. timeline. Oh, yeah, they could have Time said period. they could have said it was disbanded, and now we're gonna bring it back. Well, yeah. that's almost you know that's almost what I'm wondering happens if that's what happens in the Section Thirty One show. 
is if they create Section 31 and or you know section 31 there because apparently everybody knows about it in this timeline and by the time we get to cisco nobody apparently knows about it right so i'm almost wondering if like the end of the section 31 show is going to be like hey we've reached this period of peace or whatever we don't need this stuff anymore or or something goes wrong right and so we're we're actually are shutting it down Mm -hmm. and we're classifying everything about it and nobody can know about it. So by the time you fast forward 90 years, which is put us in the DS nine time frame, nobody knows about it. Yeah. Right. That's three generations. So ago. Let, me, let me try and let me, maybe try, let me try and soothe your conscience on this. Okay. Uh, now just keep in mind, this doesn't have to work like a modern, uh, intelligence agency. So it's completely feasible sure. to me that, that section 31 Sure. With the advanced technology and all that, and, and organization that they have, yeah. that they know exactly who knows about them on what ships. So, it, so it doesn't really matter if we see a character who already knows about it, because Section Thirty One is monitoring every single person in this in the Federation who they know to know about them. So, so great. So, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited for our great Starfleet utopian police state. Big fan. That'd be nice. That'd be a neat little twist. Oh, but we could fix not it. Not liking it. Yeah, but we could fix it. It could be Tyler. Starfleet's supposed to be better oh. than that. The idea that they are tracking everyone just by itself. That okay. So it's the but NSA. We, but we and know we're they liberals. Are, but we know they are okay. But we we're liberals, and we say, hey, the NSA shouldn't be doing this. Well, Section Thirty One shouldn't be doing. It. That's not what Starfleet was supposed to be about. That's the point. That's perfect, though, right? Because isn't Ash Tyler the exact kind of piece of shit that would like ruin it for everybody? Like, sure, as as sure. Should, and look, he's like this and look, is wrong, and, and look, he, like tears it all down, and look, that's what the season's about. Okay, and there was an idea. If you had Section Thirty One during the Cleon War, if you had Section 31 during the Dominion War. I get it, yeah, I right? It, and the yeah, whole part yeah. of Section 31 is times of emergencies. But if we're now past the war, we're theoretically at a time of peace, Section 31 shouldn't be... Like, no, there's a point. point. There's a point where you go, okay, look, yes, things are real bad, and you shouldn't make perfect the enemy of the good. And sometimes... And that was, that was why DS9 was good, because it introduced gray area to Star Trek, and Star Trek never had gray area. And people didn't like that at first. But it asked bigger questions, and that ended up being good if they eventually went down the right path, which they did. But, again, they were at war. So now, with at this point, they're not at war. Those questions aren't there. there Section 31 doesn't exist right now to save the Federation or to save Starfleet. So and, why? It's just, it shouldn't exist. Right, and I think that's perfect. That would be a very good theme. And maybe we'll Has see Has Starfleet it. lost its way for yeah, some time yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but we're only nine years before TOS, and we know... So, so they have to resolve it in the next nine years. Well, nine years. I'll see you in nine years. <laughs> All right. I mean, I guess. I don't know. It's just... They put themselves in such a bad time Yeah, I don't know why they did. It seems like they just dig these they holes. They just always want to do it. They always want to go back. Ever since... And I think because if you go back and look at Voyager and DS9... I don't know. I, maybe it's they can't imagine another 80 years past that future technology. Nah. But, I mean, that can't be it because we're getting a, par- a Picard series. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be in the future. We'll see how it goes. Maybe it's going to be 20 pr- years. It's going to be 20 years later. I, uh, maybe it'll prove the prequel trend, trend right. Yeah, if it's really <laughs> weird. I, I bet not, though. If it's really weird. I bet it's going to be awesome. I bet it's dope. The Picard series? Yeah. I bet it's going to be great. I hope so. I hope so, and I hope we get to see other people. But it's got, we'll a, it's got a that's knight. that's a discussion for. It's got a day. knight in it, right? Isn't he? A, is he not knighted, Patrick Stewart? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a knight in it. I, th- I thought you meant in like I was like, do they have knights in Starfleet? No, anyway. no, no. Uh, yeah, actually, to 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 wrap this up too, I think um, actually I totally lost it. So anyway, I, I did whatever was in my brain. I totally lost it when you did the thing with the knights. All right. Do you have any other thoughts? No. Uh, no. What's your What's your final takeaway? Would you recommend? How do you feel about it? I liked it. I mean, look. Canon aside, st- all the stuff I complained about with Section Thirty One still exists, right? Everything that I said about Hugh coming back, yes. If it was a movie, it's lazy, and I would have hated it, and I would have said it's a garbage movie. But it's a TV show, so bigger picture. We got lots of more episodes that they wanted Hugh, and I like Hugh, and I want him back, and so all that's great. They shouldn't have killed him in the first place. I'll take whatever bullshit science they want to give me to bring him back. I thought the episode was well acted. I thought it had good scenes. Uh, I thought that the unlike I said in the last episode where I didn't buy the whole thing with Saru and Burnham, I totally bought it with Tilly and Burnham. I bought it with Tilly 
and Stamets. And and then and I bought all the scenes between Stamets and, and Colbert. So I think this show I think this episode for me, I understand all your criticisms and I agree. I think this is more than the sum of its parts. Sure. Because yes, there's a lot of flaws in the parts, whether you're looking at it from a canon perspective, from a science perspective, blah blah blah. But when you put it all together, I thought it was well paced and I thought it was well acted and I thought it had good scenes and I thought the concept was good. The concept of context was really nice and perspective. I think that's really nice. And so I, I overall liked it and I recommend it. So for the exact same reasons, yep, I think they should be embarrassed of this episode <laughs> for the exact same reasons. Cause I had so much, so much going for it yeah. that, that, that the 30 minutes they spent on that non the science nonsense, all the sure. contrivances, it's just, just, you should be embarrassed. Sure. Like this could have been, I would have preferred all of it to be an action scene. I don't care. Sure. Like really, I really would have. Anywho, I could have dealt without the conservation of mass nonsense because it just didn't make sense yeah, in the way yeah. they were using it. But yeah. or they could have, oh, you know what? They could have spent that thirty minutes going over how Section Thirty One needs to be a thing. They could have, they could have done, they could have spent that time yeah. on that. We don't like it. Maybe they could have done something about yeah. it. You could have written thirty in thirty minutes. You could have come up with some reason why, like uh, that, would have been interesting to to uh, to involve Section Thirty One, right? Yeah. But, Nope, we just we just had to really focus on exactly why this guy came yeah. back to life, and I don't know. Any, anyway, don't watch it. That's my, my recommendation. What about you? My recommendation is watch it. I still think it's a good episode. I think if you look past the canon stuff, if you're part of the canon Brigade, you're not gonna like it, but you're not gonna like Discovery anyway. So mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're if if the science stuff is gonna bother you the way it does Jason, then you're not gonna like it. But if you're in it for the story, if you're in it for the the universe building of Discovery, or I if you're in good. it just so you can understand our review. <laughs> yes. that's another way to go i'm not sure how many people that's gonna apply to but man, somebody someone someone will watch this one day and be like oh i was watching the reviews and i just needed to see the next episode <laughs> one of these days um it means you have good taste yes and we appreciate you yeah we I love you. you we love you um i'm 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 concerned about where the series and where the season is going in regards to religion. You gotta have faith. Maybe the hand will guide us to the right place. I'm concerned about where they're gonna because I feel like they're in a no win situation right now. Where if they come to the end of it and say, Hey, we found some scientific explanation for these things. Like there was something guiding us, but it's a species. Or I got right? you, I got it. I nailed it. You ready? Well, let me finish. Let me finish. Undiscovered country. It just is the same God. It's the same guy. <laughs> same god alien that was it was the final frontier oh sorry the final frontier yes, yes. i sorry yes final undiscovered frontier. country was six. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry carry on yeah i i don't i feel like they're in a no-win scenario here where if they go with the route where hey uh there's something guiding us and it turns out it was a species not not a creator not a god or whatever then somebody's gonna be pissed about that you know more oh my god they're attacking christmas people and but if they go the other way and be like, oh, maybe there's this higher power out there, and they leave it unanswered, well then it's gonna be like, okay, but like, uh, that's not what Star Trek is. Yeah. <laughs> Star Trek has always been pretty, never, well sometimes, but most of the time not overt in atheism, but but pretty clear that everybody's an atheist. They're about that nonsense, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's I, I feel like they've set up a no end scenario, but then again, DS Nine did it too. And it it did it. It worked. So, you know. So I'm concerned, but overall, I like this episode, and I'm still thinking this season is better. And this was another episode where it was a self-contained episode with a higher part of the larger arc. And I like that trend. And it looks like that's where we're going to get next week with uh, Saru going back to... Uh, Literally what face the hell his is, demons. What the hell is the name of his planet? <laughs> oh, f- I don't even remember. Anyway, the Kelpians. He's yeah. going to go help the Kelpians. So anyway, so you see us then. Hopefully, we'll be able to do that one, get back on track, yeah. and be live. No, we will. Thursday night, roughly 9.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. on YouTube.com. Don't call me pretentious. So like, comment, subscribe. And you know what? Comment. Tell us what you thought of this episode. Do you think Section 31 should exist? Is there is there a reason for Section 31 to exist, not in a time of war? Because I'm interested to see what other people think. I don't think it does. But yeah. let us know your thoughts in the comments. Yeah, let us know in the comments. And also, uh, uh, 
Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I was doing I was doing so well up to that. As always, follow us on our social media, twitter.com slash at DC and pretentious and Facebook.com slash don't call me pretentious. So until next time, I've been Paul. I'm Jason. And boldly go, everyone. Love, 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 love. Love you. Bye. <laughs>